Hello everyone. This is another adventure, another start. Um, me and my son, we've been planning uh, to go and visit the Kurong area, which is uh, down south in uh, uh, down south Adelaide, uh, between uh, the Florio Peninsula and uh, the uh, Mongambia. So midway between uh, Adelaide and Melbourne, a bit less. And um, yeah, the idea is to do camping, go to visit local food producers and uh, finding more where they are located and uh, supply from them. Pretty, pretty simple. So yeah, with the new scrappy car, with the Agri Adventures logo on and uh, stay tuned on Agri Adventures and uh, go to visit the website, by the way. What are you doing, huh? Let's go! I'm full of love and wild and free First stop, we are McCarthy's Orchard. We're gonna get some fruits for the tour. Ooh, what do we have over here? We have apples, we have pears, we have plums. Okay, so what I'm gonna get. You can do it. Fruits are done. Well, it's really fun. I think it's going to be really fun also for kids because you get inside and you have to choose your fruit, which is really cool, but also you have to weight it and you have to do your own mat and then you have to choose the money, you have to put them in the box. That is a good experience for kids, definitely. Your destination is on the left. Hello. Uh, Chris, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, Chris, well, sorry, what's your surname? Williams. So I've always had uh, agricultural interest. I've always mm. enjoyed working with, uh, with animals. And uh, it wasn't until uh, 1990 when um, my partner, new, she was quite a new partner at mm -hmm. that point in time, she uh, had found these animals at the Royal Adelaide Show 
in the children's nursery. The alpacas, yes. And so we, uh, she grabbed me by the hand and took me down to the children's nursery, and uh, we have a, a Newfoundland dog, very, you know, a very big dog here, and uh, and she's always had them, and uh, they always have Newfoundland puppies. So I'm thinking, oh no, here we go. She's going <laughs> to want to get a puppy, but no, she uh, she walks straight past them and down to this corner, and here are these animals I'd never seen before. 12 to 14 months later, Adrian was transferred to the Glynn Fire Station. So Adrian was the first female firefighter of the Metropolitan Fire Service here in South Australia. Wow. So there's only four people on shift, her and three, three men, and her station officer on her shift had alpacas. And uh, so that got her all excited again, and I said, okay, if we're gonna do it, let's do it properly. So we went and borrowed $300,000 and spent mm -hmm. on 13 alpacas. So they ranged wow. in price between 20 and $30,000. Wow. And so what you'll see today, uh, and when you visit, is what we've been able to, to grow and generate from that initial loan. We're now manufacturing our own range of quilts, like bedding, continental quilts or duvets, mm -hmm. and we export them to China. Oh, wow. So you know, people go, oh, well, that's, that's interesting that you're actually exporting something back. That so, is good because it's yeah. quality. Yeah. Obviously, quality is appreciated all over the planet. Mm. So you're working with these products. And, and what else do you produce with alpacas? Our, our main business is selling of livestock, mm -hmm. uh, like both domestically and internationally. Um, same with fleece. Uh, once we shear the alpacas, uh, we can take you down to the shearing shed in, in, in a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we sell raw fleece, we manufacture our quilts, and then over the last uh, eight years, we've been developing the alpaca meat business. People initially sort of shy and go, oh, what, you know, how can you eat these animals? The problem is, with the numbers that we have, what do I do with all the, particularly the boys, mm -hmm. that are not good enough to sell as breeding stock, um, they may be a white with a brown spot or you know, something else that's not quite right. It may be a female that has a genetic fault or something's not right or cannot produce milk. Mm -hmm. So the alpaca lives for 20 years. And so it's a very long time that I'm perhaps keeping unproductive animals yes, yeah, exactly. here on the farm. So we looked at the most logical thing was the, was the meat business. And the, the meat is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this is something else that we can... Uh, we can we can share with the with the people visiting, you know, be it a, an organised meal or just a, a, a platter uh, that they can then taste. Hence, the next thing, the next phase of the development of our business is that we're about to build a tourist complex, which will have a, a restaurant, dining out. They'll be actually dining out over the water because we have this beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful lake here, um, and then we can showcase all the different aspects of the alpaca meat. Accommodation September. I'm hoping to have this nearly finished or finished by Christmas. Wow, Ambersan alpacas, to see, beautiful place. So uh, next step, it's going to be the uh, Smiley Samoyed uh, Brewery. Let's go to have a look. Bye-bye little alpacas. Okay, let's go. Smiley Samoyed Burrits or
Hello everyone. Today we are visiting Cape. Yes. Okay. And we are in a brewery. Mm -hmm. We are the Smiley Summit Brewery. Is that right? That is right. Where are you from? Are you local? I can't. So, always been down south of Adelaide. Grew up in Wollonga, which is probably about 20 minutes away. And uh, moved to the city after finishing uni. And uh, then my husband and I decided we wanted to start a brewery and uh, moved back to yeah, Mahaponga. So that is a family business? This is, yes. Oh, and do we have kids around? Two kids. Oh, they are running around somewhere. Uh, the, at daycare today, but yeah, um, yeah they're four and one. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. And uh, okay, okay. Um, it was. It's an interesting choice. I mean, why somebody decide to like? What was your job before? Uh, I you? I was a lawyer, and my husband was a software engineer. Yeah. Okay, so. Lawyer and software engineer, and you end to open a brewery. It's moved by passion, was it? Yeah, so it's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, so, so try to be more in contact with people, yeah. try to be more in contact yeah. with and an opportunity for uh, my husband and I to work together as well. Yeah, which a course. lot of people are, are skeptical that that's something they would like to do with their husband or wife, but for us it works. Well, so yeah, that is that is good. Uh, so we started home brewing together and um, yeah, things ramped up and we had a whole room that was dedicated to brewing, not here, like at home, and um, had four beers on tap and our friends said we we're making really good beer. So yeah, that just seemed, seems a bit strange now, but yeah, at the time it just seemed perfectly natural that we would want to open a brewery, so. Perfect, yes, why well, think you open a brewery yeah. as well. <laughs> What's your favorite beer style? Uh, favorite beer style, probably be a pale ale, so mm -hmm. um, mid-range in alcohol, yeah, fairly um, fruity, yeah, not too high in bitterness, that would be my go-to. Your style? Um, yeah, but I really enjoy some dark beers as well, so. That's good, mm. they're really I'm, good to eat. Yeah. <laughs> to eat with. Yeah, that's really yummy. Yeah. Okay, how many people is working over here at the moment? Uh, today we've probably got about eight people working because it's school holidays, so we've got a few people in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, on our payroll at the moment, I think we've got about 26. Oh wow. Yeah. So you offer just beer or you offer... Food as well, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we, we have the production side of the brewery, so where we, we make the beer, mm -hmm. then we sell that to wholesale customers, so to bottle shops and restaurants and cafes, um, and then they sell it to customers as well. Mm -hmm. And then we have our retail side, so we've got our brewery bar is what we call it and um, we're open seven days a week and we do uh, lunches on weekends, public holidays and school holidays and then snacks every other day. Perfect. Yeah. Lovely. Thank, thank you Katie for your time. Thanks and, for uh, coming down, thanks for having a chat. And uh, what we'll see again because now we are discovering where you are when I'm passing by I'm gonna stop because beautiful. this is a beautiful setting, look how beautiful it is. Thank you. And outside and inside they're different, so they're really interesting. Bye. So, yeah. <laughs> Ciao. so, an after all tour at the Smiley Samoyed Brewery, it's uh, time to go to pick up my son and go down to the Kurong. Close the door. Is he? Yes. Ah, that's...
So what the navigator is saying to us, that uh, we're going to be there for 7.41, wow, without stops, which is going to be 8. Because, no, well, we are in camping. It's not that bad. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. Right, then you will arrive at your destination.